Okay, welcome back. Here we go with the um, detailing part on the speed sculpt. So I have one and two kind of solid bases started that are nice and rigid now. They've uh, cooled off, but I have a uh, you know, removable cap here for this character. Remember, I'm just doing the best kind of uh, waist up is the goal here. And um, this guy, we attach the arms. Yes, I set they're nice and strong. And I don't have to worry about uh, having them break off. Let me see if we get this a little low. Oops. Lower. There we go. And we're going to go into the face and use a series of tools today. So um, I have, everyone has their own favorites. And one of the ones I've just been learning to use recently uh, includes the uh, soft rubber tips. The I think the lighter color ones are more flexible and the darker ones less flexible, a little stiffer. They kind of let, let you glide across the wax a little bit more. Uh, also, a set of these little hoop tools to get in there and like carve away the clay without it ingraining back into the clay and, and getting in your way so especially for this one i'm doing the morel uh, mushroom top and that particular type of mushroom has a a lot of uh, pits in it so i really want to accentuate the shadows if you could see uh what i started carving just like a as an older person or older humanoid mic in face and i was going to do kind of these vents for the mouth. I, I didn't do anything with the arms. This is something to avoid for your final um, gesture sculpt for the arms, uh, the sausage arms, as I like to call them. You want to accentuate the bony protrusions and carve in where the overlapping muscles and bones might be. But in the early stage, they're just fine because you want to get something strong and you can't shape too much when it's really flimsy and soft. So... Uh, let's go in and try a couple of these different tools and techniques and see how it goes. So right in here on the shoulder, underneath the jawline, it's kind of, you want to define some shapes. So I want to try and get underneath here and separate. This is nice uh, and create some big planes, some big planar shifts. So you want to get rid of these long, smooth arcs and kind of carve out some definitive shapes that will uh, help define the planes. So you're looking for the surface planes. These are your value uh, changes. Uh, for any change in direction, there's usually a change in value across the shape. You'll also notice I have a warm light up overhead and a cool light back behind. And this gives me a little edge rim light and some darker recessed shadows. So having a good lighting setup helps a lot. And I also have a, I'm on a sculpting stand here that I can spin around. And I have another uh, stand here that I can spin around here. And then I have the uh, yeah camera <laughs> also on an arm. So lots of moving parts here, but you know I've been working on setting the station up for a while. And uh, I like how this little almost like flowery part on the top turned out. It was kind of fun. Let me um, make sure this is out of the way bit more there we go so i'll have to remember to tilt that up and i can even move this out of the way i want to lay this down see the light shining across the surface you want to move your sculpture around pause for a minute try not to get locked in one view with one lighting setup because you will inevitably um, flatten your surface out and you'll lose a lot of the character and, and quick gesture. So I only spent, I think maybe 20, 30 minutes on this guy yesterday. And these speed sculpts, you try and do them like under an hour. That's my goal here. But, uh, you know, as usual, I'm talking. So the gesture of this guy had his face kind of, there was a key line in here. So let me redefine the key line. And the key line went from up here and it kind of curved. Let's see, I lost it. So the key line went from here and between the eyes, down the mouth right there, 
see that there's a quite a bit of curvature going on there before you started getting flattened out. So you got to watch your gesture lines. And this clay, I'm now getting used to the clay's hardness level, so I have to get the right tool to draw these key lines on here. In the middle, kind of find that spot in the middle of the torso and just kind of drag upward. And if any of the grooves or the carvings get in the way, I'll kind of pull up and redefine that key line all the way up. And it should go up here and then curve maybe back around something like that. So I kind of lost that curve yesterday when I was, um, but in there it goes, it's back in. You can see the tilt of the head and whatnot. So what I can do if I want to uh, lighten this up, I can get my heat gun out, hit the heat gun a little bit. Uh, the noise filter on this uh, open broadcast has been really, really good. You do that, that'll kind of give me a general um, slickness. You can see it melting that goes. And that's really part of the fun working with this wax, it's melting it down a little bit. And once I get that done, I'm going to use the spatula and the tool for some of this stuff. And Go ahead and set this uh, out of the way for a second. And you guys can see, all right. Okay, so I want to get the pits. Uh, the eye, the sockets are typically one of the most definable and discernible areas on any creature. So I want to kind of define that on both sides. And although this is an asymmetrical kind of surrealist Mike and puppet uh, or character. I'm, I am going to do a little bit more symmetry, so, so he's not quite so asymmetric. So I want it to be purposeful uh, asymmetry. So I'm kind of curving out to go, and then I can feel it just pop loose. And one of the things I was kind of concerned about on these discs is that these um, wires pop free. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my tool here and see if I can pop this loose without ruining my sculpture, of course. So I'll grab this with the needle nose and very gently kind of twist and wiggle and pull as I go. There it goes, it's coming out. Ta-da. There we go. So, um, yeah, I wasn't really happy with the thickness of these bases, as it were. They're too thin to really hold the wire in there well. So this is going to have to get a JB Weld to go in there um, nice and firm. So I'm going to set that aside for a minute. And I have these other ones. So I would get this level thickness, at least three quarters inch thick, and see if I can put this guy down. So what I'm going to recommend for most of you to, when they're down on these low bases, they're down low on these bases uh when you view them they're they're kind of like the base gets in the way because they're kind of like flat like they're coming out of water or something and for display purposes if you want to see this better um what i'm going to do is pop this up off the base a little bit more and so i kind of did that here with this one i was starting this is going to be like a little rocky protrusion i'm going to set a character on and i was doing the wire as the line of gesture for his pose he's going to be like standing on the edge like an explorer getting ready to jump off the edge and so for this guy here i'm what i'm going to do is i'm going to slide him back down into the base uh to this new one which i know is uh, stronger and is not gonna come free as easily let me double check this is the right one yeah oh ha <laughs> ha that is not the right one <laughs> it was this one let's see this make a yeah, this one I put in there good. Okay, so now I can put this on the new base before I get you know too too much detail in there. Just slide them down, 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 and I press a little more. I haven't put any detail in this guy yet, so it's okay. Not gonna hurt anything. There we go. So now he's kind of suspended up off the ground a little bit. And what I can do is uh, build up the base. Clay. Now I can kind of see my bust a little better. And I know uh, you, you focus on the size, the inches. Don't get too over-focused on that. Just kind of know how much general, generally how much clay uh, you want to expect to use for this. So I got some clay in my little heat box here off camera. So I'm just going to take this underneath here like that. I'm just going to 
create like a little pedestal of sorts to help support this guy. And it's, it's too melted. So I should probably turn my heat lamp off for now. See, I wanted it that way. Um, and I can come back to this guy. Uh, if you make a little space in the freezer and freeze them up, um, I did that yesterday and, and it stiffened up really, really fast. So uh, if you want this to be stronger, again, you can crisscross and kind of cross hatch the clay up, but you want to kind of press the clay up in there a little bit and then even down to the base and just kind of secure it. So this is uh, the reason I'm spending, I know this is not as exciting, um, but the reason I'm spending the time on this early on is because you're having your armatures w wiggle, wobble, and fall apart on you is one of the, the most frustrating experiences when you're learning to sculpt. And it, it really destroyed a lot of my joy of sculpture when I was a kid, when I was really young, and I had no idea. There, you know, there was no internet. <laughs> So finding any resources for how to build an armature, right, or resources on um, you know these trade magazines or specialty hobby stores, there was there wasn't really much in the way of step by step on this stuff. So a lot of times I all my sculptures fell apart on me when I was learned when I was first sculpting, and yeah, it was I would say almost traumatic. And I can also get this pose back. He was kind of thrusting his head back a little more with the torso. There we go. So you want to get that gesture, get that pose solidified, secure on the base before going in and detailing this guy out. And also, uh, as the gesture was going this way at the line, the torso kind of went out this way, and I wanted it more thrusting that way. So you just got to kind of push and twist and pose these guys. Uh, now, I'd be tempted, of course, to sculpt more of them, but I'm going to stop. I don't want you guys to get too detailed because every bit more of the character you do, if you do the legs on it, is twice as much work. So I'm trying to spare you guys the work. Okay, there we go. And then I can also um, kind of measure around the arms here. And whenever you're doing that, and kind of go to the elbow and, and pull and kind of spin around to six. And then go over here to the other arm. And just keep myself sane here and make sure that I'm not, yeah, so this arm got a little stubbier than this one. So if I want to get that on there, I have a little torch today that I wanted to. A little tiny alcohol torch. I had the creme brulee torch out yesterday, and it's just way overkill for these little tiny things. So here's a little tiny alcohol torch I got. So. This little guy I can squeeze. That is super fun. Trying not to light my phone on fire while I'm doing this. There we go. So it's another tool that you could use if you didn't want to get a heat gun. Um, the little alcohol torch is less expensive. So now this part is melted and, and I wanted to be even more uh rigid with it i could score the side right like that and then add some clay in there and it's still a little weeble wobbly on me so i'm not going to get too much into the hand just yet bring my little base back up you guys can see that there we go and again um using the tool to drag the clay to molecularly bond it with the other clay back and forth a little bit not pressing too hard. I'm just kind of letting it slide. It should be nice and melted and soft for this uh, phase and into the blade of the forearm. It curves back. And kind of, uh, it's, a, it's like a support behind it and I can push and press and get those planes going that I want. And of course, using your fingers. Hey, kitty. Cat wants to get on camera. So I'm pulling. Now, um, there's no armature in the arms, right? If, if this is a 
going to be a finished piece. This is just a speed sculpt. I'm just conceptualizing, trying to figure out what kind of characters I want to make in these rough explorations. Uh, but, you know, if this was a finished piece, of course, I would have I would have an armature in there and maybe even armature for the uh, hands as well. So I remember we have the video for the hands coming up here after a bit. And we also have the little guys here that you can put clay on. Okay, cat wouldn't stop tormenting me, so I had to pause for a second and um, went ahead and uh, took a second to run that other bust over to the freezer. So here we go. So I had started this yesterday and I have a cap in the body on there. So let's go ahead and <laughs> top of this without melting in hand, of course. We'll uh, ensure this other extra melted clay kind of adheres to this one. So what I'm trying to do here is uh, create, establish a good foundation for the top of the head. I want to put that cap on so that way when it presses in there, um, it's flush and it will pop together nicely. Just using my fingers for this is fine. And this one, um, I could have raised up a little more, but I'm going to leave it as is and make sure I know when I do the cap, which is the front, which is the back. It's easy to lose sight of that on these uh, Anthropomorphic or non, you know, human type characters. So yeah, so he needs more clay here in the front. So I'll pop this off again and work that clay in there. And if I need to, that front again. So yeah, I use the heat gun a lot. Um, so I'm still really learning how this clay works. I'm used to all the other clays, the plastilina, the oil base, plastic, plastilina, plasticine, super sculpy, wet clay, wet clay, and this is the new stuff. So I just kind of dove right in so you guys can use, learn to use the clay that, you know, is now the standard for most studios. And... So figuring out when to, what consistency you need it to be at to do what steps in the sculptural process is part of the thing we're learning here. There we go, that should work. I'm gonna have to mark this thing so I remember where the front is, there we go. That's the front. Let's go ahead and put a little mark, key line on there for myself, there we go. Yeah, so you want to re-scratch your key lines constantly. Um, it's easy to get off center. Incredibly easy to get off center when you're working, so you don't want to be battling that all the time. So I get up underneath here. There we go. And I don't want this new melted glue to adhere. I just want to have a good seal. and kind of. It's almost like keying it. A key is uh, kind of a that having two shapes that kind of interlock together. So that way, if I wanted to put an actual key, I could, you know, drop a little dip in here and then scoop out a spot in here like that. This is how you do two part molds and different pieces. And then I could press these two guys in. Oh, that was a way off, not even the right spot. Where's my front on this thing? There it is. And that way I have this kind of little spot to keep me grounded. 
and know where exactly this is going to go on each time. Okay, I'm going to cover that. Let me cover that up. I'm sure you guys can see underneath the cap. So I'm continuing to build up the head here. Pressing the clay up underneath there. And then that little key I just added, it's, um, I'm going to strengthen that into the cap a little bit. There we go. So I'm going to add that in. And sometimes you can make the key slot the, a feature as well. Not a bad idea. So maybe I'll have like a little extra, I forget what you call these little flutes, these little flues in the, in the uh, caps of the mushrooms. I'm going to just lay this down for a second. And so I put these in rather quickly, so maybe I can go back to this now and see if I want to. Making this a little more fluid. There's pieces that were crumbling off at the end there. I can go back and pick some shapes. You know, don't just be haphazard about it. Like pick some shapes. I like do a little or bigger ones or smaller ones and triangles and make some of them curl. So I'm not going to get crazy detailed right now because we still got the whole body shape to do. And If I get too delicate too quickly, all the little stuff just falls off and breaks and you end up repairing as you're working and, and roughing stuff in the same instead of this the um bring it all up evenly. There you go. The other side too. Now it stiffens up pretty quick. It also melts quick and it's thinner. So just kind of figure it out. Make sure when you set your gun down, you don't your heat gun, it doesn't uh, melt the carpet or whatever is nearby because it is hot. Okay, so I'm gonna basically give myself a little noodle here around the edge and strengthen up a lot of this edge that I had added yesterday. So yeah, there's some parts that are really frail. Which would be cool. Um, it's not quite to what I want to deal with right now. I'll I'll pull them thin at the end, just like uh, just like I would eyebrows or eyelashes or little delicate horns or something like that. I add them in the end. It's no sense doing them right now. I'm just kind of dragging the clay back into a larger form. There it goes. And the same thing underneath here. You can kind of pull and drag the clay each direction. And whenever you feel like uh, your tool might work better than your hand, grab your tool. No, no absolutes here, right? goes yeah it didn't adhere all the way it's all right you can melt it down and get a little stronger bond later and as i'm doing this now i'm going to start thinking about pressing and maybe curling it around and making different shapes and go left to right come to the end there there we go there's my little key I mean, the front, so I know that's the front of the, like a sombrero. <laughs> or not to think of sombrero doing something like this. OK, 
Okay, one more noodle around the border. Mm, yeah. And there. You know, looking for any uh, weak areas that are not intentional. Moving quick because this stuff stiffens up pretty fast. There's a little air right there. It's too thin still. Just missed the making my noodle big enough. So and having little balls of clay nearby that are ready to add in here and reinforce helps a lot. So there we go. Yeah, so if I did all this uh, on while it was attached, <laughs> guarantee you this thing would be half as strong. I'd be even weaker and it'd be falling apart on me. And like I said, it's not fun having your sculpture fall apart the whole time you're working. So make good decisions early on and get your sculpture strong before you detail or do any super thin parts. And if you do super thin parts, you do them separately on a, this is a plexiglass surface I have here, a piece of plexiglass or glass or whatever, some smooth surface not going to stick to is too much. Yeah, a little thin right there still too. There you go. Okay, it's looking pretty good. Let's try this uh, cap back on again. So again, I have my little key mark there. There we go. And therefore, it should pop right together. Nice. Okay, uh, I'm going to continue uh, up underneath here just to finish that seal off a little bit more. My... Nice warmed up clay. And before I do that, I'm going to warm up and score the receiving end here so that way the clay will stick to the stem more and not to the cap. Good. Huh? I was going to score it real quick. There we go. So what I'm looking to do here is create like a, a flare that goes out around the top of the stem, the head, which is going to be basically the head or the face region for this character, and then um, press it up against the uh, lid there. Now you can do the same thing with an arm, a tail, a wing, uh, and these are speed sculpts. So you can just kind of be patient, learn, you know, go run it to the freezer, let it step in, and then go back and you'll see how nice and strong it is when you assemble it. Okay, there we go. Let's try this again. Yeah, nice. So I'm going to get up in there, underneath there, try and blend it out a little more. Maybe drag down the body and there we go. So it's looking like a regular mushroom at the moment. Um, I had all the reference boards up on the other videos, so I thought I'd leave those screens off for uh for this demo so that way you can focus more on having this full screen and seeing how to actually move the clay so remember I'm, I'm supporting behind it with these hands as i press so i'm not just shoving it's that would just break it i have to like squeeze it basically between my fingers and drag there it goes cool 
And then I get down here towards the base. And remember, uh, all this dragging of the clay should make it stronger. And you'll hurt your fingers. You'll get calluses if the clay is hard and you're doing this. So just be prepared to get some lotion on your hands, whatever. Soften the clay up more. Or if it's really hurt your hands, just use your tool. A little spoon tip. Go swoops. There we go. So he's got a little, uh, he's kind of veering to the side and over. So um, I tend to make all my gestures going one direction. So let's kind of roll with that. Let's kind of make him a little awkwardly pressing side. Now, as I'm pressing, I want to make sure this does not adhere too much. I don't want it to uh, stick as it's cooling. So I'm going to take this off for a moment and focus on the body here for a minute. So now we can look at the different types of um, characters we're thinking of. So I had them all kind of... Uh, the expression had like big kind of saucery eyes, kind of trippy eyes and whatnot. I'm not sure about this clump that I, I dragged and left it down there. I was just going to kind of leave it there for now, I guess. So let me use this tool. A little spoon shape to kind of drag some shapes. Okay, so plane changes in the plane. So let's go ahead and give this dude an actual um mouth and expression so i'm going to give him like a high brow and he's spinning around on the um on the metal my armature wire so could be little trouble if the wire had a direction to it but it looks like it's going to be okay okay so i'm going to kind of run with that groove that I created, so I'm going to kind of curl this down. See when I, when I do that spoon, see it's a nice smooth surface. So I'm going to spoon this one down as well. Like, I'm going to furl it. And I'm going to bring this down into like a nose, like a ridge of a nose almost. And then almost like a, you see a lot of the French influence and animation the eyes i'm going to kind of bring this over and I'm, I'm using a twisting and a curling motion so i'm kind of digging in and i'm curling it over and around holding it from behind and pressing and basically making a big giant uh upper eyelid which is going to be right here there we go and i'm just doing a twist there so again that was do with my other hand. I try and do uh, symmetrical moves with my hands. Well, maybe that's with the camera in the way. It's, I can't do that. But So I kind of did this motion and then down in here I went in and I curled this up like that. And yeah, I didn't quite mirror it, right? This is a great part of having a video. I can go back and watch to see if I just forgot the exact movement that I did on the other one. There we go. But see these uh, shadows and grooves I'm making? These show up really beautifully with sculpture, which you don't really get with a piece of paper or with a painting. This looks like uh, I got a little thin. And then this part here, I can kind of bring down maybe some baggy eyes down below and then as I do that I want to continue this little I want to separate the um, upper eyelid from this bridge that I had created this nose and then I want to chisel the edges here try not to leave a bunch of flat surfaces try and pick a direction 
uh, for a plane change, for a shape change, and then run with it. Yeah, it's getting a little messy in there, so you got to kind of bring this clay back together a little bit. And maybe the spoon's too big to get in there, so I'll kind of leave it alone for a minute. Try to. <laughs> yeah, I need. So I think I dug in deeper there. I just got to dig more clay up. There we go. And then pull it down into it. That's what I did. Okay. Then the bottom here, that one should come. The upper eyelid, about right there. Then the lower eyelid. And I'm gonna leave the eyes as hollows for the moment. And try and smooth some of this out a little bit. Now it's really mushy, soft, crumbly, whatever. Um, you know. Sometimes you got to cool it or, or um, use your little um, hoop tool. Ah, that's what I should be using. Rubber tips, of course. That's what I brought them out for. I forgot to use them. So yeah, so the, these rubber tips I found work really nicely um, on the wax clay when it's still soft. You can kind of mush the clay that crumbles back into the other shapes of clay. These these gray ones are so soft though, so let's try this little yeah, it's a little better. So I'm just gonna show you a variety of tools. You could just use I mean at the end of the day you could just use a freaking popsicle stick chopstick in your hand. You don't have to get any of these other tools, but um I find it useful to explore all these different tools. The other one's a little bit older character, so I'll keep maybe this one as a younger member. Remember the tridimensional character? You want to think of the social, like where they fit in the society they live, community, as well as their physical and psychological, of course. So we'll make this guy a little uh, maybe... Mm, Maybe a little cocky. I don't know. Yeah. Arrogant expression, perhaps. Kind of thinking about, I have my notes in front of me. I'm thinking about all that stuff as I'm doing this. I'm not just blanking out and making it because I think it looks pretty or something. Which you can do, but it's not what you're learning with this exercise. Huh. Okay, so yeah, the eyes and face you can get like really fixated on. Early in the process, you got to be careful uh, doing that. So let me continue on here. So let's let's kind of call the majority of that at least, and I could use this a little more. Everything can be a tool, right? <laughs> Almost looks like an owl, which I could kind of run with. I was doing a owl dragon recently there we go so i'll just leave it like that and then maybe my hockey stick i like this you guys should all have this one with your toolkit um yeah the hockey sticks uh kind of fun so i could go in here and maybe give them a little upper mandible There we go. Maybe just a little bit of a upper lid and chin. There we go. Yeah, maybe he's the uh, the farm hand. And those little thumbnails I had going. Whatever ideas come to mind, you can run with and just 
have fun with these. If you if you're trying too hard early on to make like this awesome perfect character, that's not what this exercise is about. This is about exploring and and finding some new shapes and techniques and like breaking out of your standard characters that you might all find yourself always making the same style or type of characters over and over again. Yeah, you know, use this as a take this chance. You know, use my little hoop here, carve away. Make something different for yourself. And I might even just kind of curl these up and leave these on the bottom. If I like it. And maybe he'll have his, like his, a hand on his hip or something and like holding. Or maybe he'll have a sack over his shoulder. I'm not sure yet. Okay, so see how that lighting, the shadow catches those edges really nice. These are the, the plane changes I was talking about. You don't want it to be all melted and you don't want to round everything. You want to try to find some surface changes in the planes and make it go from like one surface change to another. Like, you know, have let the two edges meet up. Try this again, let the two edges meet up like here. So that edge right there meets against this edge here. That's what I'm going to also cover with the digital sculpt and these two edges meeting together against that one and then again against this one that's what gives it interest that's what makes it pop all right if this is all just a round blob uh it loses you know it's usually shows it's a beginner's mistake let's put it that way and then bring the nose i don't want them to look too human so try and keep that change in form intact. And you see right here, it's kind of mushing up the eye, the inside the eyelid. Let's leave that for later. Let's do that detail at the end. I mean, if I can get it quickly with the big tool, awesome. But you, know, you can get stuck trying to fix that stuff. And I think it's really better to do it while it's harder. Melt a piece in there or something like that. Okay, so yeah, just touching. See, I melted off like the detail I put on the nose. So let's, let's maybe bring that back in here. Lower cheek there. So I'm gonna leave that, I'm gonna leave that edge from the upper cheek to the lower cheek. That's interesting. It catches the light, it gives it depth and shape. Let me go to the upper cheek here. Scoop under and around, again, catching an edge there. And then maybe give them slightly more of an upper lip and then instead of it just being a line you might draw right like just like whoosh, putting a line in it's all, way more interesting if you put an edge and put a bevel instead of doing and then do another bevel down right and then you can drag and do some stuff like that but yeah, if you handle the piece a lot, you're going to round out and move and melt out a lot of the detail. So you got to be careful. Okay, and he's rocking all over the place. So it's uh, another kind of... But that's okay. It's a speed sculpt. They can just take them off. Them on. Okay, so there we go. There's my little guy. Um... And give them some arms. I have some really wet clay in here. Probably not what I'd prefer to use at the moment, to be honest. So. 
so yeah, you can um, shield your clay in the heat lamp. You can like put in put the heat lamp farther away, like lift the lid up a little bit, open the little aluminum foil doors. I'm just gonna take some of this really melted stuff and just have some fun here for a second, and just show you. you can give them some texture. Let me take this off for a minute. And let's see, that's not quite working. Let me um, let me heat them up for a second. Maybe on low instead of high. Yeah, right. I'm gonna add some texture on the body here. some really gooey clay here and just kind of maybe give Mike a little a little rougher texture All right, that stuff hasn't been. So if it's fresh out the tub, I found that it has almost like a crumbly. Like you want to, you want to knead the clay up a little bit, like make some balls out of it, squish it up, get more of a waxy consistency, and then heat it up again. So if you taking if you're taking a, your melted clay right from the box, it'll have this kind of crumbly. Um, sensation, so I think that just needs to be mixed up a little bit sometimes. Yeah, oh, 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 I thought. There go. There's the peanut butter I was looking for. All right, so. Uh, is fun to do. It had to be really, really like the right consistency. I'm like almost like dipping it back in and then getting more of the wet clay out of the... And hold them still here. There we go. Maybe I... Uh, knead this clay up a little bit there we go and make give myself like a little it's like stippling right give myself a little stippling stick like that and i'm going to dip this into the uh extra extra melted clay and now i can Kind of drag that melted clay on the surface. Uh, that's kind of cool, right? This dude's been down rolling in the mud looking for the magic truffles. Or maybe it's part of his body. Maybe it's like his... Uh, the Mike inverted version of uh, body hair or something. Who knows? I don't know. But it'll stiffen nice and hard. So. And if I get some on my fingers, I just kind of go for it too. There we go. And since I'm being really textural with this, um, I don't care if any of this falls off or whatever, that's for sure. I do want to get some like under his little chin there. And I did want to give him some arms. So let me pause for a minute 
and I'm going to scoop out a little section for an arm. So it's going to do an arm right. Here's one arm. And across the other side will be the other arm. There we go. So we got a little, literally, armpits. One armpit, two armpits. <laughs> yeah, it's quite too much fun. Um, let me get the soft one here. And across the mouth and just kind of and maybe he's got his little cheeks filled with something. Um, there is, when we do the midterm final, there is a solution you can put onto the clay to get it nice and oily, like a polished finish. It's a type of alcohol, but you don't have to worry about that stuff for right now. And maybe take that little piece off his cheek. I'll leave his face a little open still, except for maybe his chin down there. Okay, so I'm going to give him some arms. And for the arms, I'm going to use some wooden pegs that I had cut. Um, you could just cut a little piece of armature wire if you want. I can find my jar of wooden pegs. So yeah, I got some wooden dowels and just cut pieces. Um, I find that they're thicker and they stick a little better than just using a piece of armature wire. So if I put one each side and press together, this is going to give them um, some like keys. We talked about doing the key. So if I pull these out now, make sure I hold down, you'll we'll see a nice clean connection point so put this back in and now if I put arms on there I can take the arms off and on a little bit without annihilating my character so let's do that and I still gotta get the other guy from the from the fridge from the freezer see how far he's to. he's not tilting back too bad yet There we go. So I'm just rolling a noodle. You can even you know, just roll it straight down on the surface. This time, instead of doing the noodle arm, I'm going to shape the arm a little bit. So I just rolled this out on the table here. My camera mount is attached to my sculptural mount, so sorry for the shake there. All right. I have this little shape here, so I'm going to kind of pull the wrists and the hands, try and do this in one shot. And about halfway, it's about right. Cool. So just take my little fennel knife to whatever you got handy, butter knife. And then just rip it if you want. There we go. And then see if I can get these in each side of the posts. There we go. Oh, yeah. Cool. And then maybe I'm going to have uh, him holding a sack going on an adventure. So I'm going to bend these four and then maybe hand on his hip. And so this would be thrust back a little bit like this. Go. I can pull that elbow, and then this hand would be on the hip. So 
the one that's bent all the way, of course, is going to be way. I'm going to lose a lot of, uh, what do you call it? Uh, the length, I get lost there. So I'll pull this off. So now I got like a little arm I could pull off and on. And I'll try and give that, we talked about that bony protrusion. And if I want to have the uh, pinch, you know, in between the uh, upper and lower arm, I can always cut that in. If I was getting really, really precise, I would have probably cut that upper and lower arm away from each other and rejoin them or something like that. But not too worried about it for these little speed scopes. These are just for fun. Here we go. Same thing out here. Let's pick his arm off. And let's define that little separation there. Upper and lower arm. And there's his hat. Yeah, too bad. Fairly uh, happy with it so far. Looks like he's got little chubby <laughs> arms and he might be leaning back a little bit, but that's okay. Now, since it's loose on the uh, armature, what I could do with this guy is go ahead and lift him up off the armature like I did with the other one and throw some clay underneath the base here. Make sure that doesn't come off. There we go. And this is, oh, shit. There we go. This is... uh how melted this stuff heating lamp but it cools really fast right it's got it's such an interesting clay scientifically constructed so i'm just rolling i kind of need this so each time you take fresh clay out of the box i would do this because it's still see it's still crumbly and it shouldn't be crumbly it should be a nice gooey soft consistency so yeah let me keep at this one for a minute feels good on the hands it's nice and warm there we go so now when you squeeze it see it's kind of is that nice creamy that's kind of uh, waxiness or, or plasticity so you want it to be have a nice plastic and then i'll go back to this base here and i'll just give them a little bit more of a part that's not part of his body, right? Something that kind of lifts him up off the base a bit more. It's kind of helpful. And then be careful with the hat here. I don't want it to fall off while I'm looking. And we'll just slide that right back in. There we go. Trying to squish any features you're happy with so far. There we go. Yeah. And now it's like a little too high up, so that wire's not sticking out anymore. But I think I'm okay with the hat staying on him. And I could even, to that point, I could take my little jar of um, wooden pegs here that I have. And I could just peg. Let's put it in the hat first, actually. There we go. And then... Make sure it's pressing down into the face. Make sure I don't mess up his nose. There we go. And then I want that peg probably to stay in there. There we go. So just make sure it was like 50-50, like half-ish. Oh, come on. There we go. I'm not sure how well, yeah. The arms. I haven't done anything yet with the arms. Okay, so um, I'm going to pause for a second.
and I'm going to go get the other one and we're going to put this guy in the freezer. And then I'm going to put the um, hands and detail these guys and they'll both be pretty much done. Okay, I dropped the other one off in the freezer and grabbed him so he's nice and uh, nice and solid now. Ding, ding. Yeah, pretty cool. And this is where you can polish and do the detail. So what I'm going to show you right now is um, and do hands. So I just got some fresh clay from the heat box and I'm making sure it's really, really uh, kneaded up good. Okay, so for the hands, um, you want to shape them and let them stiffen up a bit because they will fall apart without an armature inside. All right, so I have that one. I have this one actually is a little stiffer. And so I'm going to... I had some little funky hands you saw on the uh, reference drawings. And I still have uh, you know, the drawing here of this the original still where they have uh, asymmetrical or kind of opposed digits like two thumbs or whatever. So I'm just going to, for this one, I'm going to make sure they're roughly the same size ish. So I'm just going to take piece of clay here and I'm going to cut it in half. That, make sure they're about two parts equal, roughly. Okay, and then um, you could just roll them out, whatever, but since I have my little acrylic rolling pin here, I'm going to take this and spin it around to a nice ball and then maybe elongate it. So you know, like a little, almost like seed shape. So curl in a circle, and then back and forth to make it longer. Okay. There you go. And there's little cracks in them. If I was in a finished piece, I'd make sure it was mixed a little bit better than that, but this is fine. So then I can take this rolling pin, and I can roll this on my plexiglass surface out a little bit like that. There you go, back and forth. Let me flip them over, make sure they're not sticking too much at least and roll the back side as well there we go now um for hands though our hands will get like fatter and then they'll get thinner to the end so for these guys let's go ahead and accentuate that a little bit so i'm going to press as i roll away to the end and get that kind of thinner finger effect from the thicker pad of the palm. There we go. And now I can take my um, pretty thin. Okay, I can take my cutting tool here and I can shape them. So um, I wanted to give them a thumb on, on the inside. So I got to make sure I have the, the handedness correct here. So I'm going to cut out a um, thumb for both of them, so I'm just going to mark where I want. Let me see if I get these up here. It's easier to do this on a smooth like glass or plaster, so I'm going to bring them up here just so you guys can see a little bit better. Okay, so I'm going to mark where I want the thumb to go, so I'm going to go thumb and thumb. And so I'm going to take that out, take that one out. Almost made like a little M. And then I'll just give him two fingers to go with the thumb. So I'll cut across there. And you got to be careful you're cutting and you're not pulling and breaking it too much. Right? If you... If I drag too hard, it will rip the clay and kind of ruin the effect I'm going for here. So if I press hard, I can cut all the way through. It goes... And this cold metal helps to cool the clay very quickly, so I don't necessarily have to run these to the freezer. Um, I could get an even thinner uh, tool to cut this with. I could also get a razor blade. Here you go. Here's like a little kind of cutter. Watch the ends of these when you're pushing. You don't cut their palm. I do it all the time. Maybe it'll cut. And the thinner the tool, the better. For cutting, but like a, a little exacto blade actually works even better. 
if you're going to use an exacto blade make sure you're on a surface that is okay to get little razor marks all over it so all of your detail um if you want to give them clothing and cuffs and whatever um, rolling the clay out and cutting it is a huge part of the process and it's a lot of fun there we go and then you can like flip them over and clean out make sure they're working both sides cutting all the way through um, now i want to cut off maybe that end finger there so i'm going to go right there on both of them okay it's like little lizard hands there you go so um and then the thumb the inside the palm is where you want to accentuate so i'm going to flip these guys both over and uh work decide which is the inside which is the outside for this so i'm going to take my tool here and i'm going to kind of cut this pad of the thumb in for my hand a little bit. So I'm going to go in here for each of these guys, and I'm going to cut the inside palm. And then maybe I could even carve out this little section in the inside. So you have padding right here that kind of act, bends in. You have like a little triangle in the inside palm of your hand. You don't have to do it exactly this way. I'm just kind of showing you. I'm actually making this up as I go, a lot of it. Because I've done so many hands digitally the last year. It's been a while since I did some little baby, little mini clay hands like this. There we go. Pull that out. And then now I can try and break that thumb free. And so maybe he'd have like his hand on the counter here. And then the other hand, he would be maybe showing the back inventory, something like that. Okay, so let's look at um, attaching these. So this is frozen, right? It's cold still to the touch. It's really hard. It also makes it, uh, you can smooth it and do some really awesome stuff with it. Okay. So the ends of these, I'm going to kind of snub and shape these, but I want to make sure that my arms are roughly the right length. So I'm going to very, very carefully, I'm going to very carefully kind of cut. So I'm almost like sawing or cutting. And I did cut myself real bad with this. Uh, it's the last big cut I've had in a long time. So, I haven't even remembered that. Because <laughs> it's just a, like a ceramic fenneling knife. I, I didn't think it'd be quite that sharp. But it sliced me wide open. I was shocked. So let me go in with this tool instead. And I can kind of... A little thin. The thinner the better. There we go. So I'm kind of cutting those little nubs off. Whew, that one's sharp too. There we go. And then this one, I think, got a little too long, so. And I could have done this beforehand, of course, but I'm going fast. I'm kind of cutting all the way around the nub on here. And that little pop at the end, that's where you cut yourself, so I've got to be a little careful and not press so hard, which is um, it's easy to do when you're trying to cut cold hard or rigid clay it's easy to press and then have it suddenly if you're cutting um give way and then whoosh, slice yourself open okay so i could roll with the thickness of these hands they could be uh i could make them almost like garment like sleeves or something like that whatever um so you have his hand here like aha like you could go this one and then this one would just be kind of on the side, something like that. His gestural, so he's got like, he's got some character going on, right? Okay. 
Okay, yeah, it's working good. So, same thing as before. Score it up, melt it. Um, make sure you're doing the same to both sides you're joining. So I'm going to do maybe a little angle. On here, a little bit, and you might end up just melting these guys down. Um, most of you probably will, so these aren't precious little babies yet, they're not, so don't stress too much if these things don't stay together perfectly. Um, I would shape and sculpt these hands a little more, um, if I was going to do some more with them, and I could even um, snip a little wire in there so they could take them on and off. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. Okay, so I just cut a little bit of the stainless steel armature wire here to put in there. And before I do the actual connection here, I'm gonna kind of get up and pose your gesture out and make sure that you've given it as much expression as possible. So you wanna become the character for a moment in this uh, case. And I know I'm going to be having these removed, but I'm just going to detail the palm a tiny bit. So this little angle piece and just kind of slice. And I want to free that thumb up. It's kind of locked in there still. There it goes. Let's see if I can get that thumb out without breaking the hand or ripping it. Yeah, it's still really in there. And third, you want to maintain the web of the thumb. I can just put that clay back in there later, but you want to get it posed. And there it broke a little bit. That's all right. And I like these kind of long fingers just going on. I got to remember to do the same thing to the other hand, whatever I do to this one. I'm pressing the clay in there. There it goes. And then form the back of the hand a little bit more like that. Okay, cut down in between, break that thumb free a little bit. Pull it out without totally destroying the hand if I can. There we go, press the bottom. Uh, and then even since it's going to go here, that, now I can score the top of the hand. Uh, actually, I'm going to not score because I'm going to use the wire and take them off. My bad. This one's going up here. Yeah, so I'm going to shape. I'm going to press at the wrist. And I'm going to kind of push since the arms are so stiff. And remember, supporting behind when I push so I don't break. So he's going to be like, hey, here you go. Here is my finest inventory. OK, and then this hand's on the counter. Right here. Make sure I can get off camera somehow. There we go. And as I do that, there we go, the arm, the hand presses in there, and now the ends of the limbs are even finally getting um, warmer since I've been handling them. Okay, once I get that done, I can go into the hand first, the wire. Uh, actually, I'm going to make the hole. Let me grab my tool because getting it into the cold, 
create quite a press and it's way easier to do this if you're holding the wire with the tool and then supporting the clay and pushing it in there. Ooh. Careful I don't stab myself. Okay, those pliers are way too big. Uh, the little small ones. There we go. Push that in there. There we go. And pop that off. Grab my tool, push it in the frozen, in the cold part of the arm first. <laughs> Drop that tiny little wire, took me a second to find it. Um, but yeah, so here's the uh, end going in. There we go, and voila. So he is like got his gesture down pretty good. And now I can go ahead and finish up. So he's nice and cold, so I can carve away and use some of the other techniques here that I had been alluding to. Um, you can also use, uh, I have a little um, guitar wire scraper that kind of helps give. Uh, a lot of um, texture, See the little lines forming, but the the little hoop, this one here, works really well in this uh, scenario. So you can like push against the hoop, and then when you're ready to scoop, you can also get in there and you can really carve out and scoop. So it's going to be really crumbly now since it's uh, so cold. So <clears throat> no problem. Just da da. You can freeze it and heat it and freeze it and heat it all you want. And the core is still really cold, but the outside is going to melt a little bit now. It's just kind of slick. And you might even see little wet water sweat beads from moisture in the air left on it. Okay. I'm just putting the hole outside. We got a little glistening. Okay, let's see uh, how fast it cools from that center core. And if I want to, uh, also I can use my little uh, soft rubber tip wax tool and get in here. And yeah, it cooled back up and hardened really fast. So that's kind of nice. Good to know. I was kind of learning how this clay works, right? So I gotta be careful where I'm pressing to if I want to keep any of the detail. So any detail I want to keep, I should probably start up at the top first and work my way down so I can hold it as I go. But this is fine. So I got to kind of determine if I want to have his eyes in here or not. So I'm kind of making that decision. I can press any little crumbs. Oops, back in there, pivot around, press with the other hand. Eyes, there we go. And at the finishing stage here, check and get rid of my key line. It goes. So I try and press with the same technique with my other hand. There we go. And then go in here. There's one brow. 
on that side, the other brow on the other side. And this guy I'm going with the no nose thing, so I can just kind of drag the smoother one down. There we go. And you'll see what I mean by the crumbles. But now when it's cold, you get this really awesome, polished, kind of shiny wax surface or whatever detail you decide to put in there. And you can see how much the hand gets in my way now. So that's why I do them at the end. Make a measure amount, put them on, and then I can just pop these off. And of course, they're not going to stay very well until I do a little melt action on it. So keep your sanity. Don't work too hard, too long on any one of these, but have fun. If you got the time and you want to put an extra hour in on them, go for it. But I'm not requiring that right now because I'm showing you guys so much and you have a lot to learn. And we're gonna do digital here in a bit. I'm gonna show you even some VR from the other VR class that you might wanna try. Even if you're not in the VR class, VR sculpting is super fun. Um, yeah, it goes. And then down here, let's see, working on this cold, I could feel my hands starting to ache. So I gotta stop here pretty soon on doing any of that detail. So what I'll do is I'll switch over to my little scooper here and see if I can't um, define some of these bony protrusions and shapes a little bit better. So I'll take this one here and I'm gonna kind of carve down, you can't see there, there you go, a plane from the shoulder down the arm. Very carefully, I'm not pressing too hard, I'm letting the Trying to let the edge of the tool do its work here. There we go. If you're pressing too hard, you're not doing it right. Because you're just going to break it. Let's see that nice planar. See that surface change on the light? Right there, that one to that one shows up really nice. So you're looking for major planes in the form of all forms. That's what sculpture is all about. The greater you can accentuate these and put them where you want and, and bring the eye to certain areas of the sculpture, the better job you've done. I'm curious if, as I'm doing this, I'm going to press too hard and pop his arm right off. That would be pretty funny. I'm sure it's going to happen at some point. It happens to all of us, and it's okay. You just heat it up and stick it back on. That's what happens. Don't sweat it. I had the motif of the uh, upper arm, upper legs being bigger than the lower portion, so I might still run with that. I might not. We'll see. There it goes. There we go. So that arm is defined much better now. That's very minimal work. And I come over here to the wrist and do the same here down to the or the forearm down to the wrist and palm. There we go. And if I need to, I think the t upper part of the hand, I might add a little clay there. I just kind of carved off on accident. And this hand is the wires holding it at a downward angle, so the chances of it popping off are much greater. So just want to be aware of that. Yeah, as I press down, I'm just snapping that hand right off from the little tiny wire holding it. Okay. Keep 
underneath here. Same thing, see if I want to carve anything away. I can hold the sculpture in my hand a little bit. And let's, let's do it. So if the hand's coming up here, let's carve away some of this backside. So this is subtractive sculpture. This is more carving technique, right? See that nice shine it gets though? Again, if your tool is super sharp and you're pulling towards you, just be careful. Nice long ribbon there. That was a good cut right there. Now, if I did this arm like I did the arm on the other character in the freezer, um, I could take them off and work them. That's clay strong. I'm pushing pretty hard. And I don't feel it ready to snap off on me quite yet. Like I would have had anticipated. Which means I'm going to try even more. <laughs> see if I can get it to break, right? So, you know, pushing the medium, seeing what it does and doesn't do. Oh, there it goes. Yeah, I'm at a weird angle with the camera in the way here. Let me see. I'm going to have to put this away from the camera for a second and do this one. I'm get around this way. Carve towards myself. Okay, and he has that um, morel mushroom head up on top. And the way it melted and the pits are in there, I'm just going to leave it like that. The idea is there. I don't need to get all crazy and detail it out right now. Um, if I wanted to do like a little beard something like that you can play around with the clay you could play with your uh the little um the thin the extra thin floral wire we got for you guys so i'm just going to take some fresh warm clay here and so you can kind of Oh, and it does like this little peanut buttery thing. Yeah, I can just kind of at the finish line here for this guy. See if I can stick some of this stuff on here without him slowly falling apart. Hard to tell. <laughs> yeah, and this is where these uh, little soft rubber tips come in handy. Just trying to get rid of that key line, and you can kind of see how the rubber end kind of 
glides across the surface nicely. Yeah. Now I just roll in the end of the tip too. And it's pretty solid. Yeah. I'm still being a little careful about how hard I press on this stuff. I don't want to mess it all up just quite yet. At the end, I tend to accentuate the eyes a little bit still. And any finishing touches, any other smoothing or flat surfaces you put on there at the end are going to uh, pop off the sculpture. It's a good way to finish up, wrap it up, and call it done. And you'll get a chance to do more of these. This is just the first assignment to get you comfortable. curve I just put on there. I'll put it on there. And pinch it on and then give it a swirl with my finger. Anything up here on the eyebrows? Let's get that extra melted stuff again. Yeah, not quite. Let's see if I want to get those eyebrow hairs on, like right there. I might just shape them. My little uh, gluing and um, sticking trick was starting to fail there on me. So I'm going to like pull up where I want those eyebrow hairs to go. And then see if I can stick them on there. And press on one side. Make it like a little triangle first. Or a pyramid shape. Stick one end on there. And really press it into the clay so it, hopefully it sticks better for me. And then I can pinch and pull. Whoop. No, it didn't stick. Let's see, come on. Not quite. A little tiny. I needed the tiny spoon end to finish this thing. There we go. You want to press. And if it has holes in it, even better, that actually might work out. And if you know something's going to fall off, take it off and like re stick it. Don't like, don't have it fall off in the car on the way to class or something. It's kind of annoying. And you'll know.
Yeah. Eyebrows and eyelashes are just uh, really, really tough to do. So you'll figure out if you want to bother, stuff like that. And what I'm opting to do here is just go for it is to just make them nice and thick. And then after they harden, I can um, carve them down. The other thing I could do here is um, make some really small little worms, little spaghetti pasta pieces. There we go. And you can take those and twirl them around shape them and then i could take that and stick that on guarantee it's going to fall off but it's all good i am prepared there we go Okay, and I'll do the same thing for the front down the beard here. Just smearing on some melted clay to start it. And you can uh, roll these little worms up ahead of time, like, like lay a whole bunch of them out. So I'll just do that for a minute here. So there's one. Hope you guys are having fun with your sculptures. Um, again, um, you know. It's, they're gonna fall apart. You're gonna they're gonna slag and move and bend in ways you don't want them to. But if you, when you're at home at least, when you can take advantage of having the fridge uh, and the freezer handy, that really makes a big difference. There you go. So I have these. I'll help you out. to have uh, the basic shape blocked in first, let it freeze, let it get nice and stiff, and then do this as uh, my arms didn't fall off, which is nice. There we go. Okay, so now I can kind of pull these out, longer and longer, and give them a little twirl. There we go. And you know, trying to twirl them up so much that they snap. Uh, And feels like Davy Jones from the Pirate of the Caribbean or something. And um, same thing with these, attaching them, you know, do you heat up and cool down and use the tool and smish them on there? Just uh, that's what your, that's what this is, uh, exercise is for, you're learning. So um, might as well go for it now when it's not your final character like figure the stuff out now not uh you know two months from now when you're trying to get your final project you spent you know 10 15 20 hours on and it's not staying together right for you you want to that's a bad time to figure this stuff out but Huh. 
looking more like uh, Groot's grandpa than a mushroom, maybe. Um, you know, and I could do these if you did want to go more the Groot route. I could take some of these uh, and you know wind them around the body like that, have it kind of twist and actually help maybe keep that arm on there. Like that. And one last time on the eyes. Let me see if I can. Hmm. And that last tool went. Um, I have a little ball, a little ball end on there as well, so you can sometimes get in there. Maybe I'll take some of the uh, super melted clay. And maybe uh, fill in the eye socket and then squish a little eyeball in there. If you want. Uh, no, we'll see. There we go. Now the shadow of the eye helped a lot. So let's put it down there. There we go. And then comes a little dot. Ah, moved on me a little bit. It's okay. Doing the bags underneath the eyelids. Hope that shows up okay. You guys see that a little bit? Yeah, there's his eyes. At the very end, right? Kind of works so far. To get some more super wet clay and Smear some on his hands and wrists. There we go. Okay, let's pause and look at the last one. Well, uh, yeah, I thought I would, to keep you guys loose and rough on this, I'm just going to take a bunch of really, really uh, wet melted clay here from the box. And I'm just going to have fun at the finish line here and just kind of paste it on his body a bit like that. And that way you guys don't worry about polishing and wet and sanding or anything crazy for these speed sculpts. Just kind of, kind of like I did on the other one, but these gives them a little shell, a little, little more texture and it's fun to do and it looks cool and it kind of matches the style too. So there we go. So I just kind of smear some more of this on. sure I'm pressing enough so it's not going to just totally come off. 
Ah. Oh, I just spilt wet clay all over myself. Ah. <laughs> That's all right. There we go. Yeah, it's going to get everywhere, so make sure you got a spot that is easy for you to clean up. And do some more in the front torso here. Down on his hands. Yeah, I love this stuff. It's fun. Fun kind of clay to play with. Um, yeah, uh, we'll do other advanced techniques. You will take a paintbrush to this as well. That'll work really good. I'm just dipping my finger straight into the uh, hot box here and getting as wet as I can find it, but you know, careful not to run any risk of burning my fingertips. Yeah, I'm not putting it everywhere. I'm just putting it like around his body, like his kind of almost like moss be on there, right? That makes sense. An overgrown mushroom dude. And then I'm finding that I'm getting big chunks coming off my finger. So every once in a while, totally clean my finger, get it back to a fresh dip. And then I can really get more of that sticky. There it goes. And it comes off in like a shell. Just take that off, put it back in there, get another fresh dip. And there you go. I'll reapply. Cool. Yeah, and I don't want to press too much after because then it'll get rid of that rough, sticky look. So after doing this, I, I would not uh, try to take the hands off anymore. I kind of did a final little glue with the melted stuff on there. Okay, I'm pretty happy with how the old guy turned out. I'm going to go get the other one. Okay, uh, here's the second one out of the freezer. So it's got that nice kind of Get wet. See the this moisture. It's just uh, it's not water soluble, so don't worry. It's just a little moisture gets on there when it first comes out and it hits the air. So yeah, um, it's fun to like filter through them and see how they're turning out. So for this guy, I'm going to um, kind of scrape a little since it's nice and rigid. Let me take his hat off here. Set that to the side for a second, and I'm just going to clean up like around the eyelids. Remember, remember how droopy they were when they're cold? Now it's hard. You can really chisel and get this beautiful kind of shiny um, polish to it that you can't really do very easily when it's still... Um, soft right there you go so i'm kind of chiseling 
that eyebrow and just you know pick a spot on your speed sculpts to do this and accentuate and make it a little more detail like choose what the area of interest on your sculpture okay so hopefully it's got one brow a little lower and like ha ha right And put the other one up a little higher. I'll leave the other one higher up here. I'll even push it up a little bit. There we go. And then the inner circle, I want to kind of even those out a little bit. So I'm going to. I know that part kind of got away from me because it was so soft. It was like flopping all over the place. So get in here. Try and clean that up a little bit. There we go. That's, uh, that's a lot. A lot has to do with the eyes, of course. Um, but don't get, you know, I'm starting off and maybe not practicing what I preach here, but you don't have to get all crazy and do detailed eyelids for these sculptures. I just want to make sure you know how to in case you want to. <clears throat> Excuse me, try it out and see if you want to do something like you know help you determine what you want to do for your uh your final characters there we go we're going to continue that plane remember that that unbroken plane that change of shape and there's the surface, the light's going to catch it. If there's a change of uh, form, it's going to always catch it and make it that much more visible. So as I go down here on the nose, I can um, come at it from here and I can like push down and undulate and then bring it back forward again, almost like a boxer's nose. And then down again kind of got away from the more what I consider like the Greek or French nose. I just kind of came to get a little more of a boxer's nose. So when you get your bridge of your nose pushed in a little bit, <laughs> getting punched there. There we go. Bring that out a little more too. I'm just trying to clean this out without making a big mess. There we go. Okay, so I'll leave a lot of that. Um, maybe flare in his nostril a little bit more. So I'll just kind of do that on each side. There we go. And then drag down that surface change. So when you're doing this, you got, uh, you want to be aware of the crumbles getting in there, right? So that's where these little um, sponges come into play. You can kind of lightly dust it. This is on your supplemental list. You can also just use an old paintbrush or whatever. We also have, uh, I'll show you the video for where to, and we'll make, um, if you want to get the guitar string and copper tube and do these little surfacers too, you can get in here with these guys and these are really the fine-tuning details going to leave little lines. 
and texture. Mm, a lot of the pros that do the character maquettes use this little guitar string rake tool. It's a rake. It's raking the little lines in there. That helps helps get rid of all the little crumbs and it also gives the textural surface some direction. That's what you're going for. Yeah, and I'm handling it with my hand, so maybe if I don't want it to get warm right away, I could just hold the base here. Yeah, this guy turned out pretty fun. Right? Every character is an experiment. That's why I love doing new characters. Not going to go too much longer here because I want to finish this up and I, don't, I want you guys to feel like you don't need to do too much detail. And because I'm going to jump over to the computer and show you the digital and virtual reality sculpting using much of the same design techniques, but the tools are different. Well, the rake really brings out the detail. And then if I'm happy with them, let's see what the torch does. I'm just curious. Probably shouldn't do this, but it's my new toy, so why not? Uh-oh. Must be time to feed the cats so they come. Da -dun -da -dun. Yeah, it's a little shine at the end that evens everything out. <laughs> okay, way too much fun with that. All right, so I'm going to leave his arms a little lumpy. kind of like that. I think he's kind of a bulkier dude. And, uh, whoa, we do uh, have some more of this little... Sticky pasty texturing to put on them. I 
don't know. Kind of looks like moss, right? I'm just kind of layering it up and building it up. For the demo, I'll just leave hands off. Um, I did want to give him a little satchel he's carrying around on his back. Maybe, yeah, I mean, I'll just give him like little itty bitty hands. So let's do that. Uh, ah. So I'll just kind of go in here and carve at the wrist. It's nice and cold. And he'll just have little tiny hands that will in essence be the uh, ends of those little noodle arms that I put on there. So if he has like a little knuckle right there, his thumb's going to be on the inside, so you're not even going to see it. So I'll just kind of end right there. Just go one and two for his little hand underneath. And then maybe carve out <laughs> small hands guy. <laughs> yeah, what else? I like it. As long as you like it, who cares what other people think? Who gives a shite? Other people like or don't like your art. Okay, so the form is going to kind of be, let's see, carve that in a little bit more. Underneath there, and pull that out. Remember, his arms do come off, so if I wanted to, but I'm not going to. <laughs> Uh, this will take way too long, and then I don't have time to do anything else. <laughs> right? There we go. <laughs> I gotta say, I kind of like it like this. Kind of different than what I had been working on, so happy accident. There we go. Okay, so his hand's going to be back, elbow out. I kind of put that crease in there already, so I'm just going to accentuate that. What I just did with the forearm there, so I'm going to bring this all the way up into there. And again, it's, it's hard cold clay so be careful with those sharp tools they don't give all of a sudden and you don't slice your finger open a little hoop tool help a lot here there we go yeah you should have these little wax carving tools. Um, 
We ordered them for the class. Not sure if they came in yet. Let's double check. Making a bit of a mess here. It's all right. Go the other side here. Maybe carve away back here as well. Watch out, kitty. Don't eat the clay. There we go. That's make that space that positive negative space makes a huge difference it's one of the core principles of silhouette positive negative space there we go okay so let's give them a satchel and call them done okay i'm gonna maybe pop the hip out um, put his hat back on him. Maybe do something with the back. It's unfinished. Maybe just stick some more texture on there and then maybe something on the top. So, here we go. Lots of uh, melted clay. A little shaggier. Just if you can, you know, if you're doing these speed sculpts and you have a area of the sculpture is completely undone, maybe at the finish line, take a few minutes and put something there. That's not going to detract from all the hard work you might have put in some other areas. Okay, I'm going to do a little stuff off camera and call them done.